Hi, I'm Raz Adoti, and you're watching The Red Booth Show. Hi, welcome to The Red Booth Show. I'm your host, Kimberly Q. On tonight's episode, we have actor Raz Adoti, who has been in films like Armistad and Black Hawk Down, and was even recently in Resident Evil and Doom. But he has his own films coming out as well, and we talk all about that. So come and join us. Hi, Raz. How's it going? It's going good, Kimberly. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is great. I'm so happy to have you on the show. It's a pleasure. I mean, look at this. What you got me here? I feel like I'm like, I'm in the wrong era. I mean, what's going on, man? <laughs> Step <laughs> I should back have my collars up or something, you know what I mean? I should have bought my leather jacket. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> Next time, for sure. <laughs> well, thanks for being here. Pleasure. And I know that you've been working on some pretty cool projects. So I wanted to talk to you about some of them. And you did a movie not too long ago called... The summoning, right? That's correct. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, I did uh, this uh, thriller um, called The Summoning. It was um, it was uh, with uh, Jaime Zevallos and um, Leila Alma, who's also his wife. Actually, um, produced it together along with um, Samira Entertainment and um, great cast. Um, Eric Roberts was part of the cast as well. And nice. Alberto G. Rodriguez was the director, and I just remember we had a blast on it. I mean, they flew me out there to, and we shot it in Houston, Texas. Okay. I'd never been to Houston before, and uh, it was hot. It was the middle of summer anyway. It was, um, I think it was... Uh, Did they fly you out from England, or...? No, no, they flew me out okay. from here in L.A., so okay. I should kind of be used to the heat by now, right? But no, it's a completely different kind of heat. It's hotter. Uh, yeah, out yeah. here, you know, it's like a desert, so that's dry yeah. heat, and out there it was just humid. The yeah. humid, it was, I think it was um, late... June or something like that. The Ooh. humidity was just ridiculous, but it was, it was, well, I really enjoyed it. It was beautiful. I mean, geographically, it just looked so different from LA and kind yeah. of how I pictured it as well, very kind of spacious and, you know, a lot of the landscape and it felt epic. You know, everywhere you look, just, you know, just scenery, it's, it's the horizon was just fantastic. That's so, you know, really we had cool. this amazing location and we're shooting this thriller and um, yeah, I had a lot of fun on that project. That's cool. cool. What, what was the basic sort of storyline for this one? Well, um, there had been a murder, okay. and um, it's pretty much a, it's almost like a classic who done it in a in a in a sense. And um, my character was Detective Mills, and basically he was brought on board in like an internal investigation capacity. He was um, following. Did you have a British accent in the movie, or did you have no. to do American? American. Oh my god. American, and that's often how it is. You know, I mean, I definitely have um, quite a few auditions where I go in for them as British. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, it's usually American. Let's so, hear one um, of your lines. Oh, no, you're not going to get that. Out. You know when we shot that? <laughs> it's like about three years, two, yeah. two, three years ago we shot that. So, um, no, I can't even remember the lines. You can, but, no, no. <laughs> but, uh, oh, well, maybe next try. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. worth a shot. I would have done the same thing. Maybe. No, but it's a weird thing because, you know, obviously as me, naturally, I don't speak with an American accent. Right. So... For me to do that, I kind of have to divorce myself from myself. And, you know, when you've got dialogue in front of you, it makes it that little bit easier in a sense as well for me to then get into a character because I do have that additional degree of separation because I know for sure I do not sound like this person. Right. So that's Those just aren't another your layer. Words necessarily. Yeah, exactly. Or even if they were, like the way I would say them, it'd be different to how the character normally would be, you know, would be delivering the line. So. It's um, yeah. I mean, it's 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 fun, and that's part of why part of why we do what we do. You know, it's about you know tearing off one costume and throwing on another, and you know transporting yourself to another time era. You know. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So okay, good. So we've got that one that can't that it's already out and it's been released. Yep, it's yeah. uh, it's been released, and I think it's about to get another release. But I, uh, as far as I know, it's definitely out on iTunes and a few digital platforms. Like Apple TV and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. Cool, so check out The Summoning. Yep. And also, I know you have another movie that you're working on now. I think there's one with Danny Trejo. It sounds really cool. Maybe Chuck Liddell? Yes, yes, yes. Um, this is a project I've been working on now for a few years. Um, I was actually approached... Um, by my producing partner who wrote the original version of the script, Ray Horta. And um, it was just, it was just, you know, I get, I get a lot of scripts, you know, obviously as, as an actor, you audition a lot and um, uh, they kind of can feel somewhat generic at times. You know, sometimes you feel you're reading something, you're like, well, I've read a version of this or some form, some incarnation of this story like a year ago or yeah. two months ago or whenever it was. And right. this came to me, it was very raw, mm -hmm. but the story was just, I, I hadn't seen this movie, you know, and that ultimately is what really kind of made me gravitate towards it. 
So, um, you know, I read the script, I love the script. Uh, before I knew it, I'm on board, like, helping make the movie, producing it, and then before I know it, I'm d directing the thing, and, wow. and, and here we are now, like, you know, producing, directing, and co-writing it, and being in it. Uh, <laughs> I did not set out to be, you know, this multi-hyphenate person. Yeah. Um, it never was a thing of, like, you know, ego or something like that. Oh, I want to do it all, I have to be a control freak about everything. It was never that, it just really, did organically become that. Yeah. And, well, because um, you obviously loved the project. So. Oh, I really did, and I yeah. believed in it, which yeah. is why I gave up so much of my time and energy to get this thing made. Right. Um, but, and, and we've been blessed as well with the cast, because, I mean, we're doing this thing. I mean, it's, it's no money, really. I mean, it's just a small independent feature. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, we've got um, Danny Trejo on board, um, Chuck Liddell, Patricia Velasquez. She was like the lead in The Mummy. I would love to hear about the cast in the movie, but we have to take a really quick break and we will be right back with Raz Adoti. And welcome back to the Red Booth Show. We are here with Raz Adoti. And I'm so sorry I had to go to break like that really quickly, but I know that you were How telling rude. us. <laughs> How rude. It's not my fault. It's not <laughs> I'm, my... Fine, I'm, fine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, okay, so we were talking about your cast from the movie. Yes, okay, my good. cast from the movie that we, we are so blessed to have. So yes, I mentioned Danny Trejo. Mentioned Chuck Liddell, of course, you know, former um, uh, UFC champion. Yeah. Um, Black kicker. Yep. Who else do we have? We have uh, Patricia Velasquez, uh, the lead in The Mummy. We had Agnes Brockner, who's a fantastic actress. I had the pleasure of working with her on a movie called Haven uh, that we did um, in the Cayman Islands with um, Orlando Bloom, Zoe Saldana, wow. Anthony Mackie, the late great Bill Paxton. I mean, we oh were, that cast was amazing. And yeah, so I, anyway, I dragged. Amber kicking and screaming into this project as well. She was the lead in the Anna Nicole Smith story. Whoa. Who else is on board? Sammy Rotoby, um, Batman, Superman, Django Unchained, Lord of War. Uh, who's it? Jaime. I brought, see, this is the thing with me. I usually go to those who I know, those who I can trust, mm -hmm. because Hollywood can be a difficult place. And a lot of my friends out here just ha happen to have a similar story to me in as much as we weren't born here, we weren't raised here, we came here, you know, chasing dreams. Yeah. And sometimes you do need that extra hand out, especially when you've got talented ind individuals out there, sometimes working, sometimes not. But those I feel who I can trust, those who I know, and I know they can do the job primarily, I'm always going to give them an opportunity. You know, that's just kind of how I, how I operate. You know, I just feel that, you know, those who kind of have been there for you as well when you, during some of the difficult times, during some of the quieter times, they're the same ones that you need to go back to as well, you know, when times are good or, w or when you are in a creative space, when you're making something together, because you know they're going to be able to contribute, you know, you can trust them. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we've got so many amazing people on this script. Um, Natalie Eva Marie as well, I, I, I forgot to even mention her, um, from WWE, of course, and, uh, I, you know what? We're just okay, blessed. So, okay. We're blessed. <laughs> this sounds amazing. Okay, now tell us the title of the movie again. El Africano. El Africano. El Africano. It's basically set in Mexico. It's about this uh, multiracial couple. They go down to Mexico for a honeymoon. Terrible choice. Uh, no, no, we love Mexico, don't get me wrong. Hey, Mexico, we cool. I'm just saying, like, for them to go on a road trip through Mexico at that particular time was not the best choice because they didn't know where they were going. They were just going randomly through lots of small towns, end up in a small bar, middle of nowhere, get into a bar fight, as you kind of do. Uh, but from <laughs> that point on, Mexico, as we right? all do, yeah, I mean, you right. go to a bar, a small bar in Mexico, you fight. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's what you do. <laughs> but, but basically, at, at the point of the fight, um, the owner of the bar happens to be there, and like he kind of you know, stops it, gives him a couple of drinks, saying, you know, I saw what happened. You know, let me apologize on behalf of my patrons and whatnot. And um, basically, drugs are drinks. He buys them drinks, drugs are drinks. They fall unconscious, wake up separated from each other, they don't know where they are. Oh no. And uh, suddenly, you know, this guy again appears and he says, look, here's the deal. That bar was a front for an illegal underground fight syndicate that we run. Give us five fights. You win five fights for us, let's make some money. You go free, go to Cancun, back to the States, wherever you want to go, it's all good. If you don't, we'll kill you and your wife and it's a wrap. So obviously, I mean, he's got no choice, he has to fight. So, I mean, that's the main story. That's the main kind of objective of, the, of the story is about win these firefights, obtain freedom. But 
there's a B story as well going on with this, where he happened to get a text out, and he's got his, you know, his boy, his brother actually, and a couple of friends from from the states, ex-military, come down to basically try and figure out, out where they are, nice. see if they're even alive first, yeah. and then kind of figure out, okay, if they are alive, how do we get them out? And there's a lot going on with this. We got like an anti-trafficking message as well that we want to kind of touch on as well. Nice, that's a really important message. Oh, right absolutely, now. absolutely. Yeah. We want to keep it real. We don't want it just to be, even though it's kind of it's an action martial arts thriller, yeah. but we don't want it. We did never want it to just be flippant and just to be you know just another fight movie right. it actually does have a soul it has it ha there's a story there and there's a message there as well and i think that's why so many artists responded the way they did that's so cool yeah yeah no we're blessed we're blessed so we just can't wait to make, make it so 2018 it's gonna be coming out in 2018. We're gonna be we're gonna be shooting it in 2018. Okay. We haven't shot it yet. We're gonna be so shooting it. So this is basically just at the package stage. Like we're ready to rock. You're in the pre pre. We're shooting 2018. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean everything's in place. Everything's done and dusted. It's just about you know getting on set now and yelling out action. Yeah, and that's the it trick, man. That's a very special trick that you have obviously pulled off. So congratulations. Well, I learned it the hard way, but you know we're almost there. From almost nothing to almost something. So I mean, you know, as I said, we, we, we feel blessed and we're we're moving forward. So. Very cool. Well, we'll have to have a, a clip of the movie when it comes out next year. Yes, and, yes, uh, yes. Keep keep posted on the the whole production and the post production, and they'll be able to follow you guys. I'm sure you're gonna have social media for it and everything. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have we'll have social media up. We'll have a website, and yeah. you know, we'll, we'll, you know, I'll find out what what's kind of trending, what the best way is to kind of publicize it. It changes and, daily, it seems. So. And also, of course, they can follow you and sort of see your adventures as well. Yep, yep. I'm. I mean. I have to be, I'm honest, I'm being transparent here. I'm not the best on Twitter and all that stuff. Man. I'm not the kind of everyday, like, oh, look what I'm eating kind of thing. I'm not kind of that person. I'm more about kind of oh. sports and stuff. <laughs> Is that a faux pas and acting faux pas? I'm always, my agents and everyone's always getting on, on at me about that. No, it's just because I, mean, I always post my food, which I probably oh, really? should be doing. So, yeah. See, I mean, now you can teach, <laughs> teach me. Show me how you do I can't, I mean, I always, I actually forget. <laughs> Half the time I just forget. It's not even just like I'm consciously saying I don't want to post. Yeah. I'm just like, into it, I'm in the moment, and I'm not thinking about stepping out of it and yeah. photographing it. And I don't know, I don't know. So give me some of what you have. I'll tell you on our next break right now. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we'll be right back with the Red Booth Show. And welcome back to the Red Booth Show. We are here with Raz Adoti, and he's talking about some of his projects, movies, acting, directing. You're doing a lot of stuff now. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big boy now. I'm, I'm all grows up. <laughs> all grows up, what can I say? I mean, yeah, and it's funny, because when I first came here to, um, to LA, it was 2003, and I, I had nothing in my mind about directing, writing, produ that was the first, I was just about acting, 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 and here we are, man, like, 13 years later, 14? <laughs> Whatever it is, man, and, and suddenly I'm just, I look back now and I, I'm su I surprise myself. I surprise myself. But it was, I'm doing it because I love doing it though. I mean, the yeah. first step of this whole journey for me, aside from the acting, was the writing. Right. You know, I had an idea for a story. I had a friend of mine, I have a friend, a wonderful writer, Sinke Henderson, and he was actually booked on a, on a show. He was doing the newsroom at the time, but he was about yeah. to write a project that I had an, an, an idea for. And so he couldn't do it. So I thought, okay, let me give it a shot. I almost went to UCLA to do a short course there, but I thought, no, let me stay out of school. I, I went to school where I had my degree and whatever, but I thought, okay, let me just see what organically comes from me without being shown the formula. I mean, I've read enough scripts in my time to kind of understand how it works, you know, A story, B story, C story, and everything else, beginning, middle, end. Right. So I gave it a shot and, and it didn't stink. I mean, you know, at least that's what my mom said. So. <laughs> my mom says it's all right, then it's all right. I mean, what, what do you want from me? <laughs> And so did you write that after you came here to L.A., like pretty shortly afterwards? No, or? that was about 2006, I want to say. Okay. Seven. Yeah. Like ten years. Oh, my goodness. Interesting. You know, it goes by so quickly. Oh, man. So Don't. When you, so you yeah. came out, I mean, you're obviously, you're obviously British. What area are you, I where England are you from? London. I'm a London. I'm a Londoner, mate. Ah. Short them. Any Spurs fans out there? <laughs> no? <laughs> There's going to be a few. She has no idea what I'm talking about now. She's no. like, it's a football thing. It's a soccer thing. Sorry. It's soccer. You know what we like with soccer. Right. Well, there you go. Footy. Yeah. Foot, yeah, it works. Right? Footy. Okay, or good. Footy. You kind of have to footy. put the cockney thing on it. Nice. The global <laughs> stuff. It's footy. So you, did you grow up in London? Yeah, I was born there, raised there. Parents are Nigerian. Wow. Um, so I'm first generation out there. And uh, all my family's pretty much still out there. Brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles, friends, everything else. And you were like, I'm going to <laughs> Los Angeles to be an actor. 
Or did you do already do some well, theater? Well, quite as reckless as that, but okay. almost, <laughs> almost. Hey, um, people do that all the time. They do. I mean, I yeah. did have a plan, and I had a body of work before I came here. I'd done um, Amistad, Steve's work. Amazing. And, um, yeah, that was just a fantastic experience. And I'd, I'd done a bunch of theater and what? TV okay, and film. What? How did you get on Amistad? How did this happen? I auditioned. It was an audition that kind of came up in the UK, as they do every now and again. We'd go up for like two, three American projects every year, and I got a call back and I was like, that's amazing. And then I got another call back and I was thinking, you know what, even when I get this part at this point, yeah. it's been worthwhile. Because I'd been told already, Steven Spielberg had looked at my tape and he liked it and he called me back. And I was like, that's blessing enough what? for me. That's amazing. And then it went to the next level where I then obviously landed the role and I was just in dreamland. I mean, it was just, it was just phenomenal. I was like about a year or two out of drama school and it was just, it was just a crazy time, man. I mean, suddenly I'm on set with Sir Anthony Hopkins and, and, and Morgan Freeman and, Pete Postlethwaite, rest in peace, and obviously Jaimon Honsu, Matthew McConaughey, Chiwetel Ejiofor. I mean, all these fantastic actors, man. It was just, I mean, it was a blessing. And um, a couple of years later, then I did um, Black Hawk Down, and on the back of that, Black Hawk Down. That's when I stayed. Okay, now that is amazing. That's so impressive. Those are two really amazing movies. Black Hawk Down is fantastic, and I'm a girl who watch. If uh, you know, girls don't usually like with war movies. You know what I mean? <laughs> but when I saw Black Hawk Down, I was like, "Wow, that was so good. It's so intense." It was intense, man. It yeah. was just 100 miles an hour. And you know what? The way it looks on screen is the way it was shooting it as well, because it was 2001, I think. But um, even it wasn't that long ago. But it was long enough ago that there wasn't CGI wasn't rampant. No. So the explosions were happening real. there. Yeah, yeah. I mean there was charges everywhere. Yeah. Ridley had cameras on guns, on helmets, hidden under bricks, burnt out cars, like everywhere. He had it in his tent. He had like about twelve different monitors just watching, <sighs> you know, foot from one take. He'd like different footage from. You know, it was just crazy. It was crazy. It was so realistic. Yeah, but it was it was a, it was amazing to make. I mean, I actually got to ride as well in the Black Hawk with um, Jerry Bruckheimer. So it's no way. I tried to drop a name. So but what did you <laughs> say to Jerry when you're like, hey, you know, how's it going over there? What did you do? I don't know. I just probably was just, I don't know. I really can't remember. I probably blacked out. It's probably, I can't remember, right? But um, no, he was cool. But I just remember that the pilot took us up and down again and took us into like a, there's a way you can do zero gravity with a helicopter. Okay. So we had the sides of the Black Hawk were open. So our legs are hanging out the sides of the helicopter like that. Can you see my illustration yeah. there, guys? Yeah. And um, so we got this like harness thing on connecting us to the middle of the helicopter behind us. And so when they do the zero gravity thing, you're literally floating up out of the helicopter. I mean, for all intents and purposes, you are just being held on by this one harness. And below us was like the Moroccan, with the Mediterranean Sea and the Moroccan coastline. We shot in Morocco. Wow. It was just ridiculous. And I'm floating and Bruckheim's floating. I think it was just like, ah! It, was just like we just, it wasn't about articulating words, man. It was just a, about a shared experience and noise. It was, but it was phenomenal. I mean, that aside. So I that's mean, what you do on your day off when you're on the set of Black Hawk Down. I wish I haven't got it like that. Well, every day yeah, we'd go out, yeah, let's go take the Black Hawk up. No, it wasn't like that. It was like that when we wrapped and like these pilots were just nice enough to kind of take, take us, us out. Here. And nice. um, yeah, yeah, it, nice. was, uh, it, was, it was a blessing again. It was, you know, I feel thankful. I mean, what can I say? Well, that's a great story. Okay, we have to go on and take another quick break. No worries. But we'll be right back with the Red Booth Show. Welcome back to the Red Booth Show. We're here with Raz Adoti, and he was telling us some very cool stories about Black Hawk Down and Amistad and some other projects that you have been doing yourself as the director. When you're when you're on Amistad, I just have to ask, what was that like working with Steven Spielberg? I mean, he's amazing. He's amazing. You run out of superlatives because I mean, there literally were scenes that I and I've actually had the nerve to resent it at first when he was directing me just because of the way he started doing it. And I was fresh out of drums. I, was, I thought I was the man. I was like, you know, to a degree. Yeah. Someone like, said, I know what I'm doing Yeah, here. exactly. Right. And it was the same where, you know, prison cell or whatever it was, and there was like these grated bars at the top where some moonlight was coming in. I was trying to read this picture book Bible, and I was trying to get the moonlight on the pages of the book. I knew what the scene was, and instead of letting me just kind of do it and find it, he walked me through it. But so, like, he was like, you know, turn the page. Okay, now do this. And move to left. And da, da, da. Now look concerned. And da, da, da. And like, you, you just kind of hit me with all these kind of words. Yeah. And I remember doing a take. I was thinking, can he just let me do it? <laughs> I had the nerve to think that. And then after we finished, every, I got off set like, when he was like cut. Everyone was like, dude, that was good work, man. That was great. And then I saw it back on the playback, and it was phenomenal. And I, I, could, I was just like, that's, that's him. I couldn't even take the credit for it, man. I mean, that's the kind of thing he would do. He would just see stuff that 
you don't see, even though you think you have it, and then yeah. you, I'm sure you do have it, but he's seeing it from another perspective. There was a time he was just talking to me, literally just off camera, one of the few times. It's not like me and him was all kind of buddy buddy. Yeah, yeah. But we would, you know, we was off camera, we was just talking, whatever. Uh, we were on set, and he was just like, wait, wait stop, wait, 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 Janus. And he calls over his crew, and, they, and he literally sets up a shot from where we were just talking, and the shot is in the film. Whoa. Just, just like that. I mean, I, yeah. So that's what he was like. He was very, very spontaneous. Knew exactly what he wanted. Very, very meticulous and very clear with his thoughts. He also told me one time that he works better out of fear than he does out of comfort. So he doesn't fully prep his days. I mean, I'm sure the CGI and technical stuff that is, but in terms of maybe the angles or, you know, how he composes the shot, a lot of that, I think, is just instinctive with him. Really? That's yeah, and so that was just fulminating, to, uh, phenomenal to watch. And oftentimes, when I would finish on set with that, I would hang around. I just wouldn't to just watch. go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I would hang around, not not just go straight home or to the trader or whatever. I would kind of like, what can I learn from this man? I'm a sponge. Let me just kind of, you know what I mean? I, I, I would do the same thing. Yeah. I wasn't dumb enough to recognize that I was in the presence of greatness, and I just wanted to learn as much as I could from that experience. Wow. So yeah. let's see, do you think you're going to be similar and try and take after the cues when you direct this new movie? I would hope so. Yeah. I, I mean, but I mean, it's very different. I mean, how many movies have he done to that point? I mean, this, yeah. is, my first, this is my feature directorial debut. I can't even say the word. You directorial me about debut. That's right. <laughs> my feature directorial debut. Yeah. And um, I've got a lot to learn. I mean, it's still, it's very, very much a learning process for me. Wait, but some directors are more like really involved with the actors, right? And yeah. some directors are more um, all about the, the scene and the shot. And I'll be more about know? the scene. I mean, yeah. I'm going to let you fly. I'm yeah. going to let you fly. If I see something, so again, I heard something, it was um, Branford Marcellus, I think the jazz musician, said something about it's a big difference allowing someone to play jazz and then stopping them when you hear something you don't like mm. than telling them what to play. Right. And that's kind of how I feel about this as well. I'm like, just play. That's great. Put, riff the way you want to riff and do your thing. If I don't like something or I feel you're deviating, then I'm going to get involved and maybe redirect or tweak or whatever. But cool. yeah, that's kind of that's how I hope to be. But I, yeah, going back to the Spielberg um, point I was making, though, it's um, no, I would have to be prepared. I, could, I mean, I would be pet I'm already scared. <laughs> I'd be petrified if I turned up not knowing what angle. And uh, no, I'm gonna. I definitely have to have that stuff kind of down. I'm gonna right. storyboard it and everything else. And yeah, you know, but from my mind, storyboard it from my ideas. Speaking of presence of greatness, I have to point this out. You got Marlon Brando there, and he is one individual who definitely made me come out here to the States because, as I mentioned, in London, I was doing a lot of theater, a lot of TV, a couple of films here and there. But um, it's really movies that I wanted to do. And I saw him in um, On the Waterfront years ago and, and um, Streetcar Named Desire and obviously The Godfather. Yeah. And I mean, you know, just name a role, man. I mean, he's just fantastic. And he's just. Really, really, I mean, I've read his autobiography. Um, wow. Yeah, I love Brando. So he's definitely I love one me of your some inspirations. Brando. Absolutely, absolutely. I love his work. Because again, he was, uh, he was cutting edge and he was, he was a person who didn't conform to the norm at that time, which was very kind of RP and very kind of stiff and very, you know, you, you yeah. kind of al almost declare your lines. And he was like, he was messy with his. It's true, you know, it was so like, different then. He'd yeah. be mumbling stuff and just kind of getting ugly with it. And I mean, that's, but that's reality, that's life. Life isn't all manicured and sanitized and, and pure like that. It's, you gotta take the rough with the smooth, man. Well, Raz, thanks so much for being on the show. It's, Pleasure. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Yes, I'm very impressed with your with the films you've already been a part of and the new movie that is going to be coming out, which is called... El Africano. El Africano, so stay tuned for that one. And yeah, thanks again for being on the show. Have me back. I will have you back. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.